Great. So Dan Hodges, and this is our Tuesday uh, on the front line navigating COVID-19. We're very happy to have everybody here. And we're going to get started with our typical opening, which is our overview for our video. Welcome today. We have a, 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 a jam-packed uh, session for you. We've got folks on the line from Beijing and from Shanghai and from Los Angeles. So today we're talking about using technology to improve the customer experience. And some of this technology you already have, and it's very, very easy to use. And we want to point that out. It's really important to understand that with all the information going on today, uh, it's important to use common sense to, to improve the customer journey. But it's also important in this time of so much going on that there are already 100 million uh, Americans already using AR and VR. Companies like Sephora and Sharon will show you some of the interactive um, um, mirrors that we had seen in Hangzhou. And it's, it's, uh, if you are an architect or a realtor or an educator or in the clothing business, or training and food, it's really important to uh, you know keep track of what this technology means to you. So we have experts today. We have Sharon Shi, who, who gave us a terrific uh, view of the restaurant industry in Shanghai, along with Catherine, who is on the line from T11 Supermarket and also a restaurant in Beijing, and Paris Chapman from Samsung, who's a retail expert and. Um, we have some really good examples for you. To start with, the customer experience is really broken into eight different factors, and we call these factors the consumer engagement index. And it's really important that, um, that you look at these eight factors and see how you're measuring up in terms of, you know, is your brand safe? Have you changed sufficiently? Are your employees trained? In fact, we developed master classes to that extent based on marketplace demand from a lot of these, um, these webinars. So over the past five weeks, we've, we've met with over a thousand executives from around the world um, in over 50 countries. And so this particular program is created by retailers and literally the, the agenda that you have today is based on feedback from last week. So we thought we'd get together with uh, other global like-minded type uh, companies and do basically uh, best practices in Asia from nine o'clock to 10 o'clock, uh, flipping over to Europe and Latin America from 10 to 11, and then the United States, Mexico, and Canada from 11 to 12. We're very happy to announce that we have McDonald's. Um, we'll be participating in this in one of our, our keynotes the Rainbow Shopping Center, which is a big shopping center and store in China. Of course, uh, Catherine from T11 and her founder will be there. We also have Vibu in the United States, who is the uh, creator of Beta, which is a very innovative retailer. We have uh, Thalia, which is one of the largest bookstores in, um, in Germany. And we have one of the board members on there. And we have a lot more uh, partners we'll be announcing uh, soon. We've also gotten requests from Latin America for virtual uh, store tours, which we offer. Uh, we've got basically 15 countries already sort of mapped out so that if you want to have a cup of coffee and, and go around the world, we can certainly arrange that for you. But I wanted to give you a, a world update. And uh, as we always do, this will be um, probably a little bit more abbreviated, but certainly, um, so Eric reports yesterday in Mexico City um, in Mexico, it's interesting because uh, there are going to be 
opening retail and then they they're they're not going to be opening retail so i think the government is keeping a very close eye on the impact of sort of COVID 19 and um and so they're supposed to be opening up soon but we don't know exactly what date um this is sort of the fifth avenue of um of uh, of mexico mexico city so you can see that they they basically have boarded things uh as uh, just any precaution uh, that uh, they need to take just to be sure that uh, when they open up, it's uh, it's effortless and, and makes a lot of sense. Um, this is a, a, a shot from outside of Brussels this past weekend. So you can see that uh, you know, things are getting back to normal. And uh, as you can see here from waiting outside the, the door, it's a bit mixed. Uh, so some people are wearing masks, others aren't. But uh, there you have it. Now, what's interesting is that, um, again, with so much news coming out at, at us, you know, it's really hard to process and, and, and filter through this. But really, that's the purpose of this half hour is to give you feedback from around the world so you basically can at least get a sense from first party uh, people um, who are just sharing information so the state. So in speaking with a number of CEOs in Europe um, yesterday, uh, last week, uh, this is a quote basically is that expect a surge in spending in the next eight, 12 to 18 months. So what does this mean? Expect a surge in spending in the next 12 to 18 months. Well, it means that companies that, that were planning to sort of digitize themselves and, and get their stores and, and sell people ready um, are going to do what they planned over the next five years in the next 12 to 18 months. So, you know, if you are any of those companies, a convention center, a tourist board, an architect, a brand, a retailer, uh, or in the restaurant industry, to align yourself with the customer journey, a certain amount of investment will, will need to be made and a certain amount of adjustment. But many of this, as we'll see very, very soon, is easy to use. It doesn't require a lot of investment. So the key to success, and I gave you the, the story of my wife's catering business in Westfield, New Jersey, the key, to the, the, the key to success in this marketplace is an alignment with the new customer journey. There are things that have changed, and alignment with that will bring you success. So whether you're a retailer, uh, a luxury brand, whether you're a restaurant or a restaurant association, whether you have a high-end brand, whether you're in the convention business, because obviously we're doing a virtual convention as, as, as we speak, whether you're an ad agency trying to develop a strategy for PepsiCo or Coca-Cola or Procter & Gamble or L'Oreal, whether you're a technology provider trying to explain how your technology works in the new customer journey, or if you're a bank or if you're training people there's a tremendous need for training, uh, safety training, customer service training. If you're a marketing company trying to get the word out there, and we've seen a lot of good messaging in the United States, or if you're a grocery company, using this opportunity to really differentiate, differentiate yourself and get market share. So last week, if those of you who are on the call so about a two-minute video, which we will spare you from, but um, it, it talked about you know a, a mall in I believe it was Singapore where there's touchless parking and there's check-in, there's biometrics, and applications and sterilization of bags. My goodness, um, it was quite quite a video. But we also want to point out again what we talked about in the beginning that there's already technology in use that can be used today. In fact, in the restaurant business, according to McDonald's, 50% of orders are already done either in screens or on mobile, and that number is probably a little bit higher. And so technology that is simple and easy to use and that can be deployed today is really the key. So in the case of a standard McDonald's um, you know, payment, you've got payment, so therefore, we're reducing uh, interactions. You've got pickup, which is flexibility. You don't want to be in the uh, physical restaurant. You've got loyalty, which is probably an area of improvement. And you've got flexibility. So those companies like Kroger and CVS and 
Walmart that have included flexibility in their business model um, are, are succeeding and seeing double-digit digit growth. So we're very happy to have on the line, and also uh, towards the end of the broadcast, we'll, we'll, we'll have Q&A. But this is the T11 marketplace uh, in, uh, in, in Beijing. And I asked Catherine if she could please give us an overview of how technology is being used at T11. And here's Catherine. Hello, I'm Catherine from T11 Supermarket. Today, I would like to show you how we use technology to improve customer experience. Uh, when you finish your shopping, you don't need to wait in line. You can use our system machine to the floor to help your job. Okay, I will show you how to use this machine. First of all, please start. Then, use this scan machine to scan the box of our product. Now you can see your product click to buy and you click do the payment. Then you need to open the local supermarket app and you click payment to close and scan. Okay, that's so pretty. It's very easy. Okay. So here's an example of just a sort of a best case, uh, a use in case where it's just it's frictionless. Um, it's easy. Um, there's no human interaction. Now, um, T11 also has a, a wonderful food court with delicious food. You can actually pick the lobster and then have it uh, have it uh, cooked by the chef while you wait. And so Catherine's going to also give us a highlight of how it is in the store restaurant so you can see for yourself. Okay, now we're in the restaurant. Uh, you can order food in the restaurant by itself using our app. I guess I would like to show you how we use it. Uh, first of all, you can choose the table you would like to sit on, and uh, you can find a QR code on each table. Then you will uh, you need to uh, open our app and find the scanning buckle here, and use the scanning buckle to scan the QR code. Then you can enter into the ordering page. And in the ordering page, you can see every menu here. And you can order everything that you would like to take. And choose one. Then choose order. Do the payment. Then finish. That's very easy. Then you can have to order delivered to your table by our stuff. So Catherine said there that the once you basically you've got the QR code on the table, looks like that's table 501, and and uh, she just waits there and uh, she's ordered and the food will be delivered. So very very simple, a best practice from Beijing. Now we're going to go to Shanghai, uh, where Sharon um, Shi, who is uh, our partner in, in in China, but also the the founder of Chakra. Um, She's going to give us an overview of the restaurant industry. We've been reporting back in March, when uh, March 15th, when restaurants opened up in China, there was about 30% um, sort of occupancy. And now it's up to 70. But rather than me tell you, um, we'll have Sharon uh, explain to you how restaurants have been reconfigured. And um, well, it's, it feels like business is always, and here is, Sharon's report from Shanghai as of last night. This is Sharon reporting from China. So, as of June 2020, the vast majority of restaurants and food outlets in China have resumed normal operation trade. There are high risk adjustments that remain in place in order to minimize risk and improve general safety across food and beverage environments. Some trading hours remain used around 70 to 80 percent of pre-virus opening times. All licensed food premises that are situated within larger commercial complexes such as shopping malls still have reduced access points that are monitored with health checks. Almost all restaurants have optimized the delivery services over the last several months. Though heightened culture is still evident, the sitting restaurant culture and experience for many consumers has returned to pre virus conditions. Great. So you can see um, exactly what's going on in Shanghai, and it looks actually very encouraging. Um, 
So there's also modified technology already in use. So um, so in speaking with this technology, so those of us, uh, 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 Parrish and I and some others have been, Sharon and, and Catherine have been involved in the mobile technology for a number of years. So Alibaba came out with called the, the code system in China, and it's very, very simple. You use your phone, you break a geofence, and there is certain certain data uh, overlay in terms of the um, COVID-19. So basically, everyone is is uh, has the ability to know if they're in a green zone, which means that you're allowed to move freely in the city. So again, this is an app you can just develop by Alibaba. It's using so the geofencing technology and a health a database laid on top of it. Um, so green means you can move around the, the city very freely. Yellow means that you have a seven-day quarantine that you need to because you've been exposed to various levels of COVID-19. And red requires a 14-day uh, quarantine. This is really simple, easy-to-use technology, can be deployed really anywhere, and it's an example of technology already out there. Um, many of you know this, but for those who may not, those LED lights in the ceiling there are actually sensors. They produce what's called visible light spectrum. And so if you're using a router um, or you know, if you're using 5G, um, you can really make your store come alive in terms of uh, density of people and basically use, use those existing lights, which are smart lights, to, um, to you know, track and to manage your, your, uh, you know, your, your flow in, in the stores. This is the fashion uh, mall in Las Vegas uh, a couple of months ago. And basically, even you know, using the spacing and also this is, this is pre-COVID, but using a screen to tell a story is certainly a way that can be engaging for retailers. And, and here's Sharon again, so thank you, Sharon, so much for this. Um, this is Sharon using uh, augmented reality, uh, sort of two-way mirror or one-way mirror in Hangzhou. For those of you who've used the Sephora uh, Color IQ, uh, this is pretty engaging. It's pretty hard to get away from that. There are some lower tech. This is Dix and, and also the Fashion Mall, and they're using digital signage to kind of explain the product, explain the uh, explain parts of the store for you. Here's a very simple use of, uh, of sort of video storytelling technology. It's actually a shoe vending machine, believe it or not. And um, so there is technology that, that, that can be used. Uh, here's a case of Microsoft where they're using the big screen technology to tell the story of, of, of technology in a very user-friendly, uh, very, very easy to absorb way. Many of this uh, anyone can do right now. Certainly one of the leaders in beauty engagement is Sephora. And so uh, I'm sure many of you uh, have, have seen the, uh, the interactive augmented reality uh, technology within Sephora. So it's certainly um, a really good place to uh, an example. And then even simple storytelling, as we see at uh, Palacio. Anyway, so at this point, I'd like to uh, introduce you to Paris Chapman, who is a technologist, and retail expert at Samsung. And Paris is going to review about 10 different slides that he's found are working really well in um, in retail. And never matter, Sharon and um, um, Catherine are on the call, and so is Paris. So we'll, we'll take some questions at the end. Paris, over to you. Thanks, Dan, so much. So really, I'm going to show you a group of solutions today that are available in the marketplace who can be adopted to your existing technology. And the stance we've taken at Samsung with our solution is we need to honor the displays and the technology, the immersive experiences that we've built so far. And how can we add to those 
so we can leverage the investments of the past, but also have some standalone solutions as well. So the first thing you have to ask yourself before we get on this slide is do we want solutions that the customer interacts with that controls interest to a facility or a retail location, corporate office, uh, or do we want it to be invisible and we're checking the environment and the customer doesn't know? So the first is a non-contact temperature uh, solution on entrance uh, using a large format Samsung display and a tablet. And really what we're doing here, it's in, it can be in stranger mode, which means it does not know who you are, or it can be integrated into your IT infrastructure. It can unlock a door, it can control access. So really the idea is you want a stand-up solution uh, that can let people know you're doing something to check fevers, to have a safe environment. And again, the whole solutions we're about to show you in group one are focused around smart and safe shopping. We want to honor the investments of the past, but how can we bolt on? Next is a kiosk system, and it's different form, fact, form factors. Um, and so basically, you have a health check station. Uh, the difference between this one and the first one is it's a little more immersive. It can be multi-purpose. It can be uh, content management driven. When you walk up, the mess is changing, and it can be a self-check-in, a self-help kiosk that checks your temperature, but it also can do other branding. Dan, next slide, please. Yeah, and it's very, it's very passive, uh, Parrish. It's very passive. I love that. Yeah. All right. The other thing that we've done is taken a 13-inch display and, and embedded it into a hand sanitizer. And why is this important? With any kind of health strategy or smart and safe shopping, you need to reinforce social distancing, you know, clean hands if you're shopping. So imagine you walk into an area of a store. We can remind people with a sensor, with a display to wash their hands. This can be branded with a company logo. And again, we're just reinforcing the positive behaviors of safe shopping. This is really interesting. So when you look at what we can do from a brand uh, working together, we can add two sensors to an ecosystem. So the first solutions I showed you, we're calling a group one solution. And those are standalone solutions that the customer can interact and they create a barrier to entrance or a barrier somewhere in the location to restrict or reinforce we're doing something for safe shopping. These two sensors uh, really are built upon the infrastructure of a antenna sensor that realizes there's a radio device in the store. That can be wireless headphones, that can be a cell phone. And we know we're tra traveling in the location and we assign a token to that device. So if I have two devices on my body, the system knows through AI that it's one person. But if there's four people shopping together, we know that as well. So why is this important? We can do contract tracing down to a milliliter. And so what that means is we know where you are in that store. We know how long you're standing in a location. And then combined with a the thermal device, we know if there's an uptick and fever. So what we can do is combine this to know how many people are shopping. If we have a fever uptick, so we need to close, restrict access, or using displays, we can control the number of people in a space. It can be a small boutique or it can be a very large retailer. And this is a PPI compliant. There's no opt-in. It's totally invisible. So you can have reporting every 15 minutes. And here's really the wonderful thing about this solution. We're protecting human assets, not only the people who come to our brand to shop, but also our employees and frontline service teams. And we can have notices on displays in the store if they need to take action to do something. Dan, next slide, please. This is really interesting. Uh, power is an issue, right? Plugging in, uh, you're trying to retrofit in the retail environment. These are battery operated devices. Let me say it again, battery operated. They go at the front door and they can control access based on number of people and also heat. So let's say, for example, we don't have the ability to plug in and we wanna show people that they can, it's safe to enter or control the number of access points. Um, we can do that battery operated for up to 12 hours. And again, a lot of those solutions I'm showing you, they're built, on, they're built to be used with Samsung, right? But if you're not a Samsung customer, reach out to us. They also work independently. And I think the main idea, Dan, here is that we want to consult and work with all of our uh, contacts and retail and really help them build the right solution. Next slide, please, Dan. Back to the retail insights and the, and the sensors we put in the store. So we talked about group one solutions that really control access, monitor heat, uh, the ones that really guard the entrance or inside the store. But once you get these sensors in the store, this goes beyond safe shopping. We can do customer journey, passive loyalty, foot traffic, 
conversion, how many people are walking by the store, how many people are going in, but also checkout management. And this is really important. Do you need mobile POS to control crowd size? Do you need to add more people to keep safe distancing while you're doing checkout? So the idea, Dan, here is really we can really spread the playing field with a solution. And not only is it a safe shopping solution, but it's a forever solution to help run your business. Next slide, please. But what I like about your approach, um, it's, it's passive, it's non-intrusive, and people don't even really know it's, it's going on. And I love this watch. Correct. Thing, but, yeah. And so uh, adding to the ecosystem, and I think this is what all brands have to understand, we just talked about, in our group one solutions, do we want to put a barrier between us and the customer to know we're doing something, or do we want to have a complete, autonomous, uh, invisible solution? And then the second part of this equation, or the third part, are the employees, the frontline service teams. What can we do uh, to include them in this ecosystem? We have devices uh, that they can wear, or, or apps on their cell phone devices that will remind them of social distancing. It can give them alerts if there's a fever uptick in a certain area. It can do so many things. So what we're doing is, uh, and I think this is really important, I wanna stress this, you can do a stage one solution and plug and play and go today or you can have a complete ecosystem. I think the most important thing we're trying to say is, you need to open, we need to open safely, but we have a 30 day solution if you wanna get open, but we also have a two year solution to help run your business. Next slide, please, Dan. Invisible uh, and touchless environment. Uh, really people know Samsung for our displays. We also have software, uh, Magic Info 8 came out this week. Uh, it is a software that drives all of our components that we produce and present to our customers. But you can have, you know, remote maintenance of these displays. You can have touchless environment. Uh, you can control content with motion of your hand or movement in a certain area. And so this is just extending the playing field. So if you're a current Samsung customer, uh, we can do an add-on to those displays. Or if you're a new customer, it retrofits just, just as well today. So what we're trying to do is leverage all those technologies that are currently in the store. And of course, with Samsung Mobile, you can have a touchless one-on-one -on -one experience. You can take over control of our displays with a mobile device and really interact with the customer uh, while you're talking to them and educating and selling. Next slide, please, Dan. This is really unique. I think this value proposition is growing. Uh, we want to do outreach from brick and mortar, right? We want to go from offline to online and online to offline. So what does that mean? How can we do that? So this is a product called the Flip 2, and this is a beauty advisor that is having a one-on-one -on -one beauty uh, session with somebody who's at home using our Flip makeup mode, brush mode with Cisco WebEx. So what we want to do is control the last mile, but also imagine this. The current solutions I showed you, let's say we realize there's an uptick in fever, and we want to close the lobby, we don't want to close the store. We want to have outreach from brick and mortar using our technologies, and then we want to push everything to the curb. We should risk mitigate our business by being able to close our stores on the inside and go online into the curb. Next slide, please, Dan. Lockers into the curb. Uh, many of you guys probably know this. We're a big provider. We have about a 90% share of the outdoor displays. We now have partners in software we have ourselves that will allow you to extend to the curb for curbside pickup, uh, click and pick up, and also lockers. So we, these lockers can be as detailed as integrated into your IoT infrastructure, or they can be totally standalone. So let's say that we're in Brooklyn, Dan and I own a jewelry store, and we realize through our technology we're getting a fever uptick or a new virus bloom. What are we gonna do? Well, we can close our lobby and we can roll a locker in front of our front door and we can still protect the last mile. We can take phone in orders, we can do click and pick up orders and force it to the front door where our customers are not hampered. They can still come by on their way home or if they're out and about and, and grab their retail experience at the curb. Dan, next slide, please. Good, so thank you very much, Paris. I mean, that's great. And then we're gonna take, take a break for some questions and uh, we're gonna start. But the first question we have is for Catherine. And uh, the question for Catherine is um, basically, what percent of your, you talked about, you showed your checkouts there on the, um, and the demo that you've done for us, and thank you so much. But what percent of your checkouts are, are, are that way? Or how many people, like the first video that we showed, and then what percent of your people that are, that are getting, um, making reservations are, uh, are using that? If you could let us know, that'd be great. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh 
Am I being heard, right? Okay. Um, actually, uh, we have a, a, a like a six, six, seven, 16, so, sorry, 17% of uh, our check machines are self check machines. So uh, people, uh, so, and most of the uh, customers choose to use these self check machines to, uh, to, to, to do the, the, the last checkout. So, uh, and that is very uh, convenient and people already uh, get used to that already. Thank you. Yeah, very, very good. Uh, so you said, was it 17% or 70? Uh, 17, sorry, 17. Oh, oh wow, okay, that's quite a bit. And then Sharon, if you're, if you're on the call, the, the video that you shot last night, um, was that, um, does it feel in Shanghai that, um, that things are getting back to normal, I guess is the question. Does that feel like it's back to normal or is it back to normal? Um, I hi, yes, I'm I. So I think people um, are slowly lowering their guards and you already see people going out and uh, not wearing masks. So right now in China, wearing masks is not a must by, by law. Um, people just go to restaurant, eat with family and friends and even like dinner, lunch. So I think it's pretty much 70, 80% back in normal. Okay, great. And, and Catherine, a question was when, um, when uh, you basically, when the, when the pandemic first hit, um, how was your ability to, uh, to keep the store uh, stocked and, and how was, was your supply, supply chain stress or was it, um, were you able to manage the, uh, the crowds? Um, actually, uh, our store never stopped uh, during the pandemic, actually. Um, and the supply is not as expected as that was, actually. Uh, and uh, we, uh, we, we, we do, uh, um, uh, there, there is, it was uh, two weeks, about two weeks that we, our supplier it is uh, was a, a little bit um, different, uh, difficult because um, the the logistic it was in a very uh, is is very short in that in those er, uh, in those um, times. But uh, back to but but it, it's already it was uh, back to normal very quickly after two weeks. So uh, it's uh, it's never to be a problem for us. Yes. Okay. Got it. And, and Sharon, as you're walking, the question is um, going back to the, the original question regarding. So as you're as you're walking in, um, in in Shanghai, are most people wearing masks, or are they um, are the, the in, in in the store are, are they using masks, or um, are the customers required to wear a mask when they go in the store? How, how is the the safety um, the issue being dealt with by the retailers? Um, I think if you entering like a big, in, big shopping complex, commercial um, buildings, they will measure temperature, but it's not a mask that they say, oh, you have to wear the mask in order to enter um, the property. So people just do what they feel safe. Um, but you could really see that a lot of people stop, do stop doing that. But I think in Shanghai right now, a lot of things are open and and even like um, bigger events are starting to collecting audiences and um, even though i think a, a few weeks ago um, the big event is still banned but now they're talking about start opening events in you know, late june and even the the kindergarten which is like the latest um um thing that open in the in any business is uh, like kindergarten schools they all start opening in June. Um, and they're also talking about opening borders in July. So things are slowly getting back to normal. Interesting. We just launched a poll. So if you could answer some of those questions on the poll. And we're getting a number of different requests from people saying, will, th will these materials be available to you? Absolutely, they'll be available to you. Um, Paris, I just want to ask a question. All the technology that you have there, um, that's technology you had, correct? This is not technology new, new developed. It's it's been there. Is that correct? 
Yeah, it's trusted technology. And I think um, when you look at it, it's available today. It's in, in our distribution channels. Um, and I think that some of the sensors are not our sensors. However, combined um, with the ecosystem, they're very powerful. Um, and so that's why we chose to partner with two or three different companies to speed the market. So they are on okay. the market and they're bundled today with Samsung. And I think, Dan, the real important thing is one of the clients that uh, we, a lot of our clients have found value is that we know that curbside has had a 39% uptick over the last 32 days, right? And so um, we wanted to add experiences or solutions that automated the safe shopping experience, right? And so um, I think the most important thing we've been taking the stance of heat and fevers, number one. Uh, number two would be the ecosystem and reporting how you build that uh, and using displays and that immersive experience to guide, educate, and move people through a store seamlessly. And so this is kind of the backbone of all these solutions. We can go in and retrofit an existing environment. That, that's key. And uh, do you have a full support for youth, youth supply installation and also training of employees? Are you sort of turnkey? Yeah, so uh, we have partners to do that. And we also have a group at Samsung, our post services team, that can do it too. And it really depends on the customer what their existing infrastructure is. Um, I will say this. This is one of the things that I think that uh, leveraging a brand like ours, if you're using us now and we have an existing support structure, we don't want to create a new support structure or new partners. We want to try to leverage what you have if it's working and really reduce the amount of heavy lifting for our, for our partners and brands. So we come along and design that based on the need. Got it. And I just also want to maybe uh, – stress the obvious here is that um, in, in looking at the pandemic, the impact it's had in the New York area, many of the local merchants, um, you know, could have had the opportunity of, of digital storytelling through their windows. And, you know, many of them basically just have these you know, eight and a half by 11, you know, were open or curbside. So even the, the simple use of a, of, a, of a screen that's intelligent, that can actually count the, uh, the people that are in front of your store, and provide a lot of data is um, is really really interesting. Um, so if you can answer the poll, if you have any other questions, we're open for questions. It looks like we've got one right here. Um, and let me get the question. There we go. So um, yes. So if you want to register for the uh, looks like the, the World Retail Forum, um, there is a uh, I think there's a, a, a URL somewhere in the webinar. So please, yep, if you can do that, that, that would be great. And again, we've got McDonald's, we've got Rainbow, T11 from Catherine. Um, and I also want to thank um, Sharon, who was up very, very late last night, doing a tremendous job, as you always do, um, with the, um, you know, the filming. And Sharon also is the founder of a company called Ch Chakra, and basically they have wonderful artisan goods from Nepal. And uh, Catherine, thank you. This is the third or fourth video you've done for us, and you've been so wonderful and accessible. And so we thank you. We think that the, the objective of these is that we can learn something from other people around the world. What's working, it will shorten our cycle. And, um, and Paris, I know you're super busy, you know, with all these meetings, and thank you so much for taking the time because, I, you know, everyone on this call listening or, you know, or speaking has an important role to play in terms of you know getting back to uh, getting back to retail, so I thank you, uh, thank you very much. You've been terrific, and we look forward to seeing you next week, and then on the 16th for the World Retail Forum. And again, we'll be following up with this video and materials. Thank you very much, and hope you have a wonderful day.